Our lesson today is entitled, Zechariah Calls for a Return to God. It's found in the book of Zechariah, <coughs> chapter 1, verses 1 through 6, and chapter 7, verses 8 through 14. This is Sunday School lesson from March the 24th, 2024. My name is Tony Miller. And the key verse for our lesson today is found in the third verse of the text, and it reads as follows, Therefore say thou unto thee and them, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, said the Lord of hosts, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. Again, Zechariah calls for a return to God is our subject. So the aim of this lesson is to identify God's calling for us to repent of our sins and seek forgiveness and feel convicted for any wrong things that we have done and pray for forgiveness of our sins. Again, it's my YouTube channel. As you please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll get my lessons automatically. Please like my lessons, please share my lessons and leave me comments. All of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, well, once again, you have caused your people to come together surrounding your word, the words that would come from one of your prophets. That would be Zacharias. as he would give your people, thus said the Lord, words from you to your people. And right now, Lord, we ask forgiveness of our sins and wash us and make us worthy vessels to be used by you. We surrender our will to you at this moment. Use us as your humble servants who were sent us to true teacher, the Holy Spirit, to guide and direct our path as we journey along this message today. And so in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray and ask. Amen. So I share with you that this is uh, the one of the minor prophets, one of the 12 minor prophets. His name would be Zechariah, the subject of our lesson. Amen. And this is a timeline that I've used, you know, so many times that gives us a perspective where we are, that we've gone through this period of kings and, and we've gone into this uh, Babylonian exile. And now we're in this post-exile uh, uh, period, this restoration period. And now the prophet of God is this one, Zechariah. He is also one who is uh, a contemporary of Haggai. We were last, while, last week, as well as Ezra. And ultimately Nehemiah as well, but that gives you some perspective of where we are today along our journey. Amen. So God, God finally sent those people into his chosen people into captivity at the hands of the Babylonians. He scattered them, and for seven years they were in that captivity. That was something that was promised back in Deuteronomy 4. They told them if they continue to, to follow after the idols that they would go into captivity and he did and daniel speaks to how long he says 70 weeks or 70 or 70 years and thus that is what happened god's prophets spoke to his people and god's word words were true amen so now i can share with you we're in this restoration period the 70 years have now expired and now that the the the, the uh, Babylon is no longer the dominant culture in the world, that now it's a Persian, the Medo Persian Empire, and 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 the, and and, uh, and and now the decree is being made by this this one Persian king Cyrus that would give God's people the opportunity to return from their captivity at the hands of the Babylonian people, return back to their homeland, and and people are still scattered. But many return. I said something around 50,000 or so have returned. But the temple was utterly destroyed. There was still a small remnant of people who, who never got uh, uh, never got exiled out. There were still remaining there. And and and, and again, it, that uh, the city gates were uh, unprotected because of, of the walls were damaged. Remember, Babylon left no stone on, on, on another. And Ezra and Nehemiah want to rebuild the city. And the walls restored Jewish life and culture as it was before, including the priestly line, which allowed them to make animal sacrifices up to Almighty God, and, that, and they could, and they would have all of that cultural aspects of their 
identity and promises that they made with the one true and living God. Amen. And I share with you that under Zechariah, again, he was, uh, it was his, his messages were to Judah. Uh, he also was interacting with Zerubbabel, who we were speaking with the last week as well. And then his messages were, uh, were again telling those people that they need to complete the task that they were, uh, that they have already began to do. And that's the message of this one, Zechariah. Let's move on. So Zechariah was, was, uh, he was a prophet and he was just one of over 30 men in the Bible. His name is Zechariah in the Old Testament. His name means Yahweh remembers, uh, which might also be a good summary for the prophet's work that bears his name. We know little about Zechariah personally, except that he was a priest as well as a prophet, and he was a contemporary of Zerubbabel and Haggai, well, again, where we were last week as well. Next slide. And then, and the purpose of this writing is Zechariah was the head of his priestly family and uh, idol, and his ministry was among those uh, of the returning uh, uh, exiles, those uh, those folks from Judah who had been uh, are now coming back to resettle the land. And, and Zechariah calls them to repentance and, and spiritual renewal in a time when they seem to be despairing and spiritually pathetic, and and, and tempered to continue some of the sins of their forefathers before the exile as well. They were just basically selfish. And I share with you when I we had the lesson in Haggai as well about their selfishness. And the prophecy of the book of Zechariah cover about two years time, but it appears that uh, Zechariah continued to have his ministry along among the people until the temple was rebuilt. And even through, uh, even though those prophecies are recorded, but he still seems to be on the scene uh, even through that period of Ezra and Nehemiah as well. Amen, let's move on. Uh, so summary of the book, Zechariah the prophet ministered uh, to the people supporting their task of rebuilding the temple. To share with you, we were talking, uh, we, we had this lesson in Haggai, right? And, and then challenging their spiritual condition until the temple was completed. And, and at some time after Zerubbabel, the temple was finished and it, and it seemed that Zechariah continued to ruffle feathers until some of his hearers could take it no longer and they killed him in the very temple that he was urged to, uh, for the people to complete some perspective, this prophet of God, amen. So last week, Zerubbabel, who was the governor of, uh, of, uh, of this region of Jerusalem at the time that it, and others had already made it back to Jerusalem, they had all the provisions and all the elements, elements of the temple and they had, they had uh, enough to make things happen. They found the foundation. They began the process of rebuilding the temple of God, and, and which was a centerpiece of Jewish life to help the Jewish uh, establish culture and identity and their relationship with Almighty God. And, and, and those returnees wanted to rebuild life like they had before. And at least that was the point that was having to, that, that purpose for Ezra uh, and Nehemiah as well. Amen. <clears throat> So background, almost nine minutes of background, let's jump into this lesson. I want to give you, I want to get into the lesson. I think this has some good value here. And that's why we wanted to kind of run through that background. Just give you some framing that we know about how we've gotten to this point. It's kind of a continuation of our lesson last week. And I'm sharing you a bit of last week's lesson as we lead into this lesson as well. Amen. So So last week we we're in Haggai chapter one verses two and four that is, that that here the out of the prophet he says this is what the Lord Almighty says these people the time is not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house now they had already come back and and, and uh, they had had uh, all these uh, elements they already had and decrees made they already they had already come back they had been there I think I share with you about eighteen years and and again that even though they've been there for some time they they now have said that the time is not yet they said there's not time. That, that, and then uh, verse three, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a uh, is it a time for you yourself to be living in your paneled houses while the house of God remains 
again, they're saying it's not time to build God's house. And they've been there for like 18 years. And God says, but you building your own stuff, right? Let's go to verses two. Let's go to uh, verse four. Just magnify point of four, verse four. And in verse four, it says, it's time for you yourselves to be living in paneled house, fancy houses, while the house of the Lord remains in ruins. Again, I share with you about 18 years. And that's what the, the prophet was saying to this people. They were just selfish. And that's what we were last week as we move along. It's just returning exiles and are interacting with God and, and the prophet of God, the man of God is speaking to them. Let's get into a little bit more background in, uh, of, of last week and then we'll jump to our lesson. Amen. So last week we learned that their priorities were on self. Again, I share with you, are selfish and not on God or the house of God. Again, 18 years and they're there and they, they're not getting it done, you know. Uh, and and, uh, and Almighty God had to send them a prophet to teach them, to make him a, a, a priority. Uh, they were held for captives for 70 years. And as soon as they were free, they forgot who had just sustained them for all of their circumstances and all that they had and, and who had historically had sustained them for th all the thousands of years. And they, they forgot and they and and. and and who had gave them all these provisions and the ability to change their condition and where they, where the, what they've been doing and where they are. And now they're back in their own promised land. Land that was once flowing with milk and honey. Land promised by God to their progenitors. Let's move on to our lesson. Amen. So Zechariah calls for a return to God. That's our subject and here. We're in Zechariah chapter 1, verses 1 through 6, and then we'll jump over to chapter 7, verses 8 through 14. Let's begin here in uh, chapter 1 of our text. Let's move on in our lesson. Amen. So Zechariah called for a return of God. Here we're in, in, uh, in, in chapter 1, verse 1, and in, in November, the eighth month, uh, uh, in the second year of, of, of the uh, year of uh, King uh, Darius's reign, and I'll share with you that in the next slide. And I thought it was important that I share with you because no, not so you'll be confused because the King James they say the eighth month and we said November and the, the New Living is where we are here. Just want to give you the calendar. Remember they on a lunar calendar, so the calendar is not 365 days. I think it's for 240, I believe, something like that. So their years are different than ours, and that's why you see. The Passover changes year after year that this clock, uh, the, uh, because they have less days in a year than we do. And you'll see in the eighth month, uh, as um, as Heshavan, uh, that's the eighth, eighth month, and that falls into the uh, region of November. That's what he said in November, the eighth month, the second year of, of Darius' reign, the Lord gave this message to the prophet Zechariah, the son of um, Berechiah. And the, and the grandson of Ido, Ido. I, I taught the Ido before in another lesson. I just didn't remember it. And I didn't want to go through that. It's like a tangent. I don't want to get into that whole concept of who Ido was. But uh, but again, that's who he is, that he is a, a prophet and a, a son of uh, Barakiah. Let's move on. And as I share with you, this was the second year of, of Darius. And I share with you that these were those kings that were made. The Cyrus, I share with you last week, the Cyrus had issued a decree for the return. And last week's lesson in Haggai was kind of betwixt and between these two, uh, these two Persian kings, where I share with you that they've come and they've taken possession. And they, they uh, were Assyrian with the most dominant culture one time. And then the, the Babylonians and now the, the Persians are the most dominant culture in the in the known world, and this one Darius is this king, and he is the one who's a who is part of the subject of our lesson as well. This the timetable would would timestamp the uh, the information we know about this one prophet who would be Zechariah. Next slide. And I share with you that this one Zechariah, you see that he is a He's like a contemporary of Haggai, who Haggai we were last week, and then Malachi would be the last prophet going into the 400 years of silence. Just some perspective here. Again, that he would be a prophet to Judah, 
not the northern kings. Again, he was part of this period of time that after the seven years in this restoration period of time. Next one. So verses two through four of our text. And I, the Lord, was very angry with your ancestors. Again, the, the prophet uh, Zechariah speaking to his people and he's telling them about their period of time of their history. That's why I share with you this timeline because you know that this this timeline of their history that they would go through the period of judges and, and, and through that period of judges wilderness and then they made them the conquest that they would not do what God told them to do and, and, and they would constantly yeah, they would marry out those Canaanite people even though God said no don't do that they were mad in the in the wilderness that they said that they got to come out to this, this place to die and then they didn't have nothing to eat and no water and God made gave them provisions and they went to the period of judges where they they they, they constantly would sin and fall away from God and they, they would pray to God and God would give them another judge and they went to the period of kings where we are today the kings and prophets and they were constantly sin against Almighty God but God his his uh, long suffering and these are his people his chosen people and he would give them a break and then he would send them prophet after prophet and again he says he was angry with these ancestors which caused him to be, be thrown into this exile again fulfilling the prophecy he had before with them he told them in Deuteronomy that you do this and this I'm gonna have to scatter you and he scattered the northern first and then he scattered Judah and he said therefore I say unto this people this is what the Lord of heaven's army and again that's a, just a name for God the Lord of heaven's armies return to me God is telling this people return to me and I'll return to you said the Lord of heaven's army and that's our key verse right and verse 4 and don't be like your ancestors who not listen or pay attention when earlier prophets said to them this is what the Lord of heaven's army said turn from your evil ways and stop your evil practice and I share with you and that's what the circle in the bottom that's all those prophets that God sent all those prophets there and he kept telling them and he giving them this, the message he says turn from your evil ways and stop your evil practices and God was just reminding this people to this prophet that this is what he has said to this people over and over again he says don't be like them next slide He says, turn from the evil ways and stop all your evil practices. And you know, for me, I've been teaching these lessons out of the, the out of these prophets and out of this period of exile and and uh, and and the um, the um, the scatterings. And it's a it's a broken record. It's the same thing. Uh, the the people fall. They go into idolatry. They go away from God. God is long suffering. God gives them a break. God sends a new prophet. He sends a new judge. And, and, and then they turn, they, they're good for a little bit of time, and then they go back away from God. They cry out to God. God hears their cry because he's their father. And then and then he, he gives them a new a prophet. He gives them a new word, a new fresh word, and they'll move far away from God. And then they would do it again and again and again for thousands of years. They do the same thing. broken record. I know when I teach a lesson, it's like I have the same uh, charts, and I have the same thing over and over and over again. That's what they did. They were like a broken record. They kept doing the same thing over and over again, and God would give them grace. God would give them mercy, but ultimately he would ultimately scatter these folks, and ultimately they would now come back, and even in them coming back, they still got some issues because they still don't have any act right, and God is now sending them these prophets in order to give them some understanding of what God would require of them in this new period of time of their Restoration. Amen. And he says in verse 5, Zechariah calls for a return to God. And that's the prophet speaking. It says, Where are your ancestors now? Where are they now? Okay, and the whole northern tribe, ten tribes got scattered at the hands of the Assyrians, scattered into their into their dynasty and gone all out. That's how you get the the the, the Assyria, the, the 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 half breeds, and you you know those uh those uh the Jewish people, they the, the people who are may have Jewish ancestry, but they've moved on and assimilated into other populations. That's what he said. Where are, you, where are your ancestors now? Where are they now? And then the others would go into the Babylonian exile, and they didn't want to come home. They said that 55,000, but it was like 1.2 million that went there, and only 55. Come on now. So where are they now? 
they and the prophets are long dead. But everything I said through my servants and prophets happened to your answer. Just God speaking. Just as I said. And the result, they repented and said, we receive what we deserve from the Lord of heaven's army. They know they've received it. Come on, when you can't keep doing the same thing over. It's like when your parent, you keep doing, you keep walking out in this in the traffic, you keep uh, doing things that, you, that your parents say don't do, and you can't expect to not get whooped. You can't expect that you're going to do and, and do things according to the, uh, that's against the law, and the police are going to arrest you. You, can, you can't, you're doing things in school, and you're going to get kicked out. You get something on your job, you're going to get fired. And he says that they, you, they, they receive what they deserve from the Lord. The family armies, we have done what he said. He And he's done what he said he would do. And that's basically what God did. Then, then, then again, in Deuteronomy 4, he said that he was going to scatter them. And ultimately, that would happen to them. Again, this leads up to the first batch of our text, Zechariah chapter 1. And, and, the, and the prophet is basically just telling them and giving them a refresher of how things have occurred. Let's move on to chapter 7. But I'm going to give you a little, just a... a a little snippet of the of the chapters that are not included here, uh, chapters two, three, four, five, and six, just what what they what they in, 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 in included. I just don't feel comfortable would go from jump from one to seven, and you say, well, what happened in the middle? It's like watching a, a TV a channel, and you and you're you're on episode one, and now we're you're in episode seven. What happened in two through six? Let's find out what happens happened in episode two through six. So the key uh, themes in Zechariah 2 through 5, the lordship and sovereignty of Yahweh. Uh, the, the prophet Zechariah reminds the people that the Lord is one and he really, he's really in control. And Yahweh is the true king on the earth and it's more powerful than those Persian kings. Don't worry about what the Persian king said. God is more powerful. That's what you be should worry about. And if, in chapter 3, the punishment, uh, uh, sin, punishment, and judgment, the prophet summoned the people to repentance and conversion. Because his concern was that uh, they needed a right relationship with Almighty God and the renewal of their covenant with him. And they had made a renewal and a covenant. They said they were going to do thus and so on. They still went contrary to that, right? And, and, and verse in, in chapter 4, return to God. It's repentance and the obedience. Returning to Yahweh means listening to God in a way that differs Significant from what the other generation did. They heard. They heard the prophet. But they didn't listen. So, so this prophet is saying. Zacharias said. You guys got to listen better than what your other folks did. Because they didn't They didn't hear. They, they listened. They heard. They listened. They didn't hear. In chapter 5. Yahweh's return to grace and love and forgiveness. And God is, was so angry with his people. That he nearly destroyed them all. And I share with you. And that was part of chapter 1. Uh, uh, I'm verse 2 of chapter 1 to share with you, but ultimately his love and his grace and, uh, and his forgiveness surpass his anger. That's the that's what we learn in those chapters that we don't see here leading up to our lesson. Let's look at chapter 6 and we jump back into chapter 7. Amen. So in chapter 6, uh, where we are, the eschatology is talking about the final days of humanity and the future whole. And he has expectations that are realized at the present time and, and future generations become the reality of the present time through specific people and situations that, that things keep are going to change, going to be the same, but God is going to deal with us because we're his people like he did with them in the past. And Zechariah emphasized the uh, unparalleled salvation that come from rebuilding these temples. And again, he's speaking to those folks at that time and he was saying about how they got salvation through, through, uh, through, uh, I'm sorry, through these two letters, Joshua, who would take me to that promised land. And now this one, uh, Zerubbabel, who would be the governor when this new period of time. And that's what we find out in chapter six. Oh, we go to chapter seven. In chapter seven, because we begin in chapter eight, I just want to give you a summary of these first few verses. I know it's probably an overkill, but I just don't like with the gaps and you don't know what happened. They made these jumps. From chapter one to chapter seven, and you have no idea what's happening in between. It's just not right for me. And if we truly desire to know the will of God in doubtful matters, we must not only consult His Word 
and as ministers, but seek his direction by fervent prayer. And that's what this uh, prophet is saying to this people, that they were fasting and praying, and he was just saying that they need to do that. But those who would know God's mind should consult uh, God's, who want to know God's mind should consult uh, God's ministers. And in doubtful cases, ask advice from those who have special business Whose special business is to search the scriptures that will be the scribes and the Pharisees and the and the lawyers and all those people who are who are uh, who are who are leaders. And the Jews seem to question whether they ought to continue their fast. Now they, you know, I'm, you know, they've been fasting and praying, hoping all this stuff would happen because of uh, you know all of the issues that they had and trying to rebuild the temple and seeing the city and the temple were were likely to be finished. Their first answer was inquiring: Does a sharp reproof from it? Of their hypocrisy because uh, they have the prophet, the, the prophet do we need still need to pray we gonna get the temple back everything's coming back together these fasts were unacceptable to god unless they observed in a better mindful manner and a better purpose and you know they 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 they, they, they had this form of duty um, but no life or soul or power in their prayers and, and they reach out to god the, the holy exercises are are done are done uh, done to God, looking to His Word as a rule and and His glory as our end, and seeking to please Him and obtain favor. But self was the center, and I share with you on the high guy that was a whole thing that was about self. They want to think about God. They think that okay, well, I, can, I can pray and I can fast, and God gonna hear me, and then God's gonna take care of me, and all this stuff, and God's gonna answer our prayers, and that was all this thing about duty, and that's what He says that. That, that, that their selfishness was a sinner. And then again, like I share with you, that here they are 18 years and they're here and they're doing all these things and going through motions and planting the vineyards and doing all these things and everything's not going right. And then the prophet come, finally comes on the scene and he tells these folks that hey, you got to get some upright. You got to get back to God and, 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 and get off of self. And it was not enough to weep or fast for days. They have searched the scriptures and of, of the prophets that they might have seen what the grounds for God controversy with the father. They, they, again, the, the prophet is saying that you you probably should be not not just looking at at, at at your current situation, but you need to go back and look how you got in this situation in the first place. That's we are now as we move into chapter seven of our text. Amen. Zechariah called for a return to God. And here we are in chapter 7, verses 8 uh, through 10. And then after all that, that's why I share with you, all of that happened. Then the message came to Zechariah from the Lord. This is what the Lord of heaven army says. Judge fairly. Show mercy. Again, these folks were going through the motions. And he's telling them that, no, get, do it the godly way. Judge fairly. Show mercy and kindness to one another. And do not oppress widows and orphans and foreigners and the poor. Do not scheme against each other. Again, the prophet is giving them a way that they can make a way back to God. To return to God. Do it this way. Again, giving them a blueprint of how they can get what they desire in this life. And not just doing it for honor or duty. But doing it because they love God. Let's move on. Let's magnify this point, a point here with me. So he tells them they should judge folks fairly and show mercy and kindness to one another. Do not oppress the, the, the orphans and the widows and all those people who don't have and, and don't scheme on folks. That's what he's saying. The prophet is giving them some encouragement, giving them a word of God, giving them a, a way, correction of how they could make their way back to God. I share with you that God people never act right. They're just not. And again, the chart I share with you that they just constantly do their own way. And they and again, that they believe that they were privileged to come. We're the chosen people of God, right? And they know that they're a chosen people of God. They know that God's kind of glory was in that temple for all those hundreds and hundreds of years that the pre physical pre manifestation of God was visible to everybody that knew that the God of the universe, the creator of the universe was with them, that their God was greater than every other God on the planet. 
and they were privileged. And they would do things because they thought that they're all, the, all that in a bag of chips. And then they, they would constantly do it over and over again. And they, and they acted like privileged children. And that's what this prophet is now trying to tell them they need to turn back and turn back to God and not turn back to selfishness. And that's what his message is today and to us as well. Amen. Zechariah calls for a return, and now we're here in this verses 11 and 12. It gives a little bit of a historical turn, turn, uh, tone here, and your answers refuse to listen to this same message. I shared that broken record, right? They suddenly turn away and put their fingers in their ears. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. I'm ah, la, 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 not hearing you. And their fingers in their ears to keep from hearing. Verse 12. And they made their hearts as hard as stone. So that they could not hear the instructions or the message that the Lord of Heaven's army had sent to them by the Spirit through the earlier prophets. This is why the Lord of Heaven's army was so angry with them, and also they would get scattered. Again, that's what the, the the prophet is having to give them a little history of how they've gotten to this point, and now they're going to a new transition, a new transition with God, a new place. They're going to rebuild what they had. They're back out of out of the exile. And, and, and now just trying to give them how to, to have better favor with God. Next slide. And here we are in the final two verses of text. And I share with you that, that since they refuse to listen, again, he's giving them a bit of a historical account. So since they refuse to listen when I call to them, I would not listen when they call to me the Lord of heaven army and the same thing you folks don't get to the point that, that you're going to call me I ain't listening I'm not listening and that's they were asking God and hey did we get another break we get another break no nah, God says no nah. and as a wind will scatters them among the distant nations I share with my image in the background the tornado that they were they were they, they lived as strangers they live in, 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 in Babylon it says where they were they were uh, slaves in, in, in their own land. They were slaves in, in Babylon. They were slaves a long way away. And the women were raped. And, and they did all these things contrary to them. And they were no longer royalty. They are no longer uh, the chosen people of God. And for seven years, they were nobodies. And their, their land became so desolate that not even one, uh, no one even traveled through it. And that was kind of a thing that, that God had, had left that land barren, that even when they died and, and when they came back, that land was still there. And they turned their, they turned their uh, pleasant land into a desert. It was pretty much desolation. That's what the word says. It was desolate. So I think I have two more cells to close out this lesson, maybe three, but let's move on to close out. Zechariah calls for a return to God. It's our subject. So in this brief history lesson, God wanted the Israelites to know that disobedience and sin have significant consequences. And he tells them to check their history. We go back and check out how they gotten to the point that they were, how they had gotten scattered for these 70 years. And the prophet warned the Israelites that they did not want to experience God's wrath again because you can see what just happened. You guys went through 70 years of horrible wrath and all these things have happened to you, right? And God wanted them to come him with a sincere de and a desire to know and love him not what they've been doing and what they've been doing at this point because that's what the the prophet Haggai come and said hey you guys are not putting God a priority you back already you out you back to your own place we gave you provisions we gave you all the stuff we gave you new prophets we gave you multiple prophets we gave you favor from the king we give all this stuff and and, and, and you still not following the one true and living God and I shared with you last night I gave you a lot I'm last week I gave you a bunch of questions I'm going to give you a bunch of questions as well in the next cell, like similar to what I gave you last week that we had under, under Haggai, right? And, and he says that sincere desire to know and love him, not what they're doing. And Yahweh is a jealous God. He wants believers complete devotion, not their half-hearted service. This is what Zachariah shares with them and with us today. Next one.
This is our next to last slide. And, and, and this, is, this is the same kind of a thing I did with you last week in Haggai. I gave you some questions and I started, is your house built upon selfish ambition? And again, questions that you can interact with yourself and try to figure out who, what's your relationship with Almighty God. And are you returning back to God? You know, it's time. Uh, uh, tomorrow's not promised. And that's this whole concept that he's saying. And I know people are studying the Bible and looking at it and investigating, checking out stuff and, and looking at the Bible stuff and doing these lessons and everything else. But, but God still wants you to turn back to him. Tomorrow's not promised. Today is a good day to do it. And God wants all of us to judge people fairly. That's what he's saying to these folks, that they felt privileged, that they didn't, they weren't, they weren't doing right with the, with the widows and the orphans and the people who are homeless and all that stuff. And he wants us to judge folks for, uh, fairly, show mercy and kindness to one another. Come on, mercy. The mercy is when you have the ability to, to, to do something bad to somebody, but you have mercy. And kindness, that's just kindness. Be a little kind. A little, and he says uh, to uh, to any any uh, to one another, and he says, do not oppress people who are less than you, and don't don't scheme and scam on those folks. Don't scheme. Don't be a schemer and a scammer. That's what the prophet's saying to us, and he's saying to you as well that that he said to those folks in that day, because we start the same problem that we think that we're all that. We think we're privileged like they were. They don't tell me what to do. You know, people are shaking their head and show me the hand and all that. Have you forgotten your priorities and your priorities should be God and not yourself? That's what they were doing. And, he, and the prophet is trying to tell them they need to correct and change their ways, right? That, that have you forgotten your priorities? Is your sin like that broken record? That that's what their sin was. And I know that you and I, that's our thing that, that we sin and when we come back to God. And, that, and that's this whole thing that I, I know that it's, a, it's kind of what, what happens. And that's what I share with you that in... And I'm teaching these lessons over and over and over again. It's the same message. But God wants you to come back to him. It's a sincere, a sincere desire to know and love him. This time. This time you come back to God. This time. Many of the other broken records when you may have done it. Or these times when you promised you didn't do it at all. Or you whatever. But he says this time. I want you to come back with a sincere desire to know and love me. That's what he wants. That's what God wants from us all. Again, the word of God for people of God. Last song. Amen. Zachariah calls for return to God for real. And you know that, that you know this lesson was all about this people of God. And that, that God had told them all of these things that they had done they had done, and again how they were they felt themselves to be so selfish and, and, and how they're doing everything away. And you know that you and I are, are, are just like these folks, that, 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 that we've done the same kind of stuff, that we, we've lived a life of selfish ambition. I trust, I know I'm calling, I'm talking about me too. So, and again, that I know this is the Advent season. This is a season of folks who are coming back to God. They're, they're you know, seeing the Christian, Christian, the Easter and Christmas Christians that, and again, that some of y'all, just like those people, in the beginning of the year, that they come, they want to start working out and everything else. But again, again that this, this prophet of God said, it's time to come back to God. I know that a lot of time you with this, with Easter, we get to be real reflective as well. And it's time for you to return to God. And he says, don't do it, don't, don't return back with, uh, turn back just out of selfish ambition. And he says that, that turn back to him now, because tomorrow's not promised. And, and, and he says that he don't want you to be judging po folks and say they, they're looking at people in the church and you already making some kind of a off the off off the rail opinion about somebody or this and that trying to find your excuse not to do this or that uh, and not to oppress people uh, who remember your priority is God and uh, and and and, uh, and and ask your questions your life like that broken record and if it is now is it acceptable time. As the prophet is saying to us right now, it's called for us to return to Almighty God. And I don't know if this is the message for you, and I hope it is, that it's now the acceptable time to turn back to God for real. Not, not, not halfway, not half-baked. So I show you now is an acceptable time to do it. That's what the prophet that come by today to tell you, and I share with you the same message, and now is the time to turn back to God. It's a new era. You don't want to be there when they... When they're when they're when you're standing before Almighty God and He don't know who you are, you don't want to be there when they go and they're passing out 
um, the the the, uh, the, uh, the benefits and the, and the judgment. You don't want to be the one who are falling in the lake of fire. So God says, now is the time. Now is the acceptable time for you to do it. That's what the prophet says. That's what I share with you as well this day. And that is our lesson this week. I'm afraid of some people learn this week's strength in your faith. The Lord provides all your needs. You learn something worthy of sharing. This is the name of Jesus. In his name, we do pray and ask these things always. Thanks so much for your time. Amen.